Hi guys, welcome to Wild Vlogs, episode four, where we'll talk about all things wildlife and all things filmmaking. Now here in the UK, the bird of Christmas has to be the robin, the Eurasian robin. For me though, actually not. It's caught between two other very striking birds. A few weeks ago, I took an annual winter pilgrimage to Stamford Reservoir, a seven trent body of water fed by the River Avon and sighted right on the Leicestershire Northamptonshire border. I brought with me my Mavic and my GH5 and I planned to film in 4K at 60 frames a second. Stanford Reservoir is an amazing place for a whole variety of wildlife and in no small way that's down to its true caretakers, the Stanford Ringing Group, who maintain its borders for low scrub, perfect for warblers in the breeding springtime season. I meet the group often, but the early winter visit is extra special. Throughout the year the group catch a great variety of species, from the common or blue tit, which is the dominant breeder in the neighbouring wood, to the incredibly elusive and the very rarely seen Setis Warbler, a UK resident warbler. There are though the occasional and pleasant surprises like this tree creeper. The tree creeper is a master arboreal invertebrate hitman armed with the most perfect pair of tweezers. Crucial data for all the birds are noted wing length, gender where possible, age and weight, and they're all tallied against their unique identifying ring number found on their right leg. Taking this constant stream of data is one or two scribes. Here today it's Mick Townsend, founder of this group some 40 odd years ago. Such vast experience is crucial, not only for Mick, but for all members of the group, as they negotiate each bird's plumage for the smallest and most intricate detail that will eventually define their status. This isn't something you learn overnight, but it takes years and years of training. This data is the absolute bedrock of what we know about birds today, and without it, well, we and they would falter. If there's any new conservation concern, it's the ringers that are first to sound the alarm. But back to the whole raison d'etre for this visit. For me, it was winter thrushes. Incredible Scandinavian visitors that escaped the dark, freezing and inhospitable winter days of the far, far north for our more temperate shores. These thrushes are split for most between the red wings and the larger field fairs. It has to be said that field fairs are my favorite. I've had the privilege of handling a few and I can tell you that these birds are absolutely racked with muscle. They're the true hard knocks of the bird world. I often call them Bolshe Bolsheviks. A gray hooded winter army with Coleman's mustard oily chest and a chuckle that sounds at best conniving. I can only imagine what the resident birds here think when these guys arrive, but I'm sure that that's pretty much where it stays. They are both powerful and beautiful.
Red wings could almost be seen as the diminutive cousins, but their bold, cream, supercilium eyebrows and their flanks of flashing brick red make them just as striking. Both of these are birds of Northern Lights skies, and some of them Lapland nest sites, possibly around Santa's less hectic springtime grotto. On arriving at our shores, both of these birds will search out and destroy our autumnal berry crops with masterful ease. Numbering millions, and without a doubt, in every corner of the UK right now. There is, though, a lesser known but just as important element to this migratory winter tale. Joining the unfamiliar and thus familiar cast of our two winter thrushes are the familiar and as such overlooked, a combined force numbering millions of song thrushes, robins, chaffinches and starlings, but for some, most surprising of all, also blackbirds. Ever so occasionally, and if you're lucky, just as I was on this day, you will get a stunning male like this, where all the signs are of a Scandinavian origin. We take comfort from our garden male blackbirds with a familiar eye ring and bill of the brightest primary yellow. But for the ringers of Stamford, it's a great joy to find a bird like this, with a dark, bitumen-like staining to both. This is almost certainly a blackbird of real worldliness, sharing in name only the traits of our familiar summer garden sentinel. Much longer wings and vastly much more muscle mass. This then the intrepid explorer uncle with tales of far distant northern lands. And it's this, this kind of magic that brings me to the incredible Stanford Ringing Group every winter. Not just for the Red Wings and the Field Fairs, as much as I love them, but for the hope and the chance of seeing a bird seemingly so familiar, yet one that can let your imagination fly. And just to drive that point home, incredibly, Stamford caught a control blackbird at the end of October. They sent off the details from its ring, its foreign ring, to the BTO in Thetford, Norfolk. And the BTO have only just sent back their findings. And here it is. So as you can see, this is the BTO report and as specified, 
This is a Blackbird Turdus Marula. Coming down to its finding details, we can see it was caught again the 30th of October at Stanford. But let's have a look at the ringing details. So this bird was rung on the 28th of March 2018, well over a year ago. But incredibly, it was rung in Utsira, Rogaland, Norway. And Utsira is actually an island off the northwest coast of Norway. Now, although this isn't a true single flight, the distance between Utsira and Stamford is 851 kilometers, which is quite, quite incredible. More so because this is a bird we would count as familiar and most probably would never even consider it would do or could do this kind of journey. Well, you'll have seen in the film that the answer for last week's teaser was revealed. The mystery bird was, of course, the tree creeper. Congratulations to Stuart Abbott, to A.D. Quinn, to Glenn Hartwell and to Tim Dixon. The teaser of this week is, as with last week's vlog, going to be in the next time bit at the end of this vlog. And the question is, what is this chick? What is this chick? The clues are there. For now though guys, it just leaves me to say, have a wonderful Christmas and a prosperous New Year. And I'll see you back here in vlog 5 on the 5th of January in the new decade. In the meantime, go and be merry and goodbye.